Well, good morning, everyone. Please take a seat for a moment. Look at us, eh? A full choir. How glorious is that? And we, we reach. Yeah. Oh, yes. Round of applause. Well done. You haven't, you haven't started yet, but we applaud you. <laughs> Um, so, we reach a new normality where masks are in and out and social distancing is also in and out and I have um, a whole list, a whole sheet to read to you. I'll try and paraphrase it so it'll be quicker. This is, this is what Chris has done to, so he didn't forget anything. So restrictions have obviously changed and we're adapting to these changes. And we'll, among us, there'll be people from both ends of the spectrum. So there'll be some people who think that we're opening too quickly and others that we're not doing it quick enough. Um, but ultimately we're trying to um, accommodate everyone and welcome everyone into our church buildings and into our church family. So we need to respect the choices of others. I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. We're not asking people, we're not telling people they must wear masks, and we're not asking people why they're not. Um, we're respecting everyone's wishes to do as they please. What we would like people to do, if they are able, is to wear a mask when they're walking around the building, and when we're singing, um, but when you're sat down, you can take your mask off if you wish. These aren't laid down in law, these, these rules, it's guidance, um, but you must do what you feel best. Um, when we're seated, we're now use, you'll notice we're, we can now use every single row of the pews, um, but we're trying not to sit directly behind one another. Um, just to reduce any risk. What else shall I say? Refreshments. For the first time today, in what, 18 months or something like that, we will be doing refreshments after the service. And so if you would like at the end of the service to come and take a seat, um, somebody will come and serve you tea or coffee. Um, this week we don't have any biscuits. That's mainly, that's mainly for the children at the previous service. They all tuck into the biscuits and there's lots of sticky hands everywhere all over the biscuits. <laughs> um, but we are going to get some that are individually wrapped, but not for this week. Um, we're using, we're continuing to use the screens for the time being, but very soon for this service we will be able to um, have the hymn books back, but we haven't decided when that's going to be. We're trying to get um, through ventilation by keeping the doors open. Is it possible to open, open the door on the other side? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Then... Yeah, okay. It's just that we need the ventilation, you see, that's why... We, we're trying to get them open, but that, the inner door's closed, the outer door's open, that's fine. Um, the peace, we don't do the peace. Um, for communion, when we come to a communion service, um, it will still be bread only, and we'll try that way of coming up. There's not too many of us, but we'll save that for another day. And, oh, you, you, can, you can sing, did I mention that? We can sing, but you, you, you should, if you can, wear a mask when you're singing. And I think that's probably about it. That's the end of the service now. I've spent the whole time talking. <laughs> so, shall we begin? And so, our first hymn is, New Every Morning is the Love. Please do stand to sing.
Sorry, I forgot to say hello to everyone that's online as well, so good morning to you. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak before them, sorry, cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet we ought, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises, defend mankind. In Christ Jesus, you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those things may please him, which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive them that trespass against us, but deliver us from evil. Sorry. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, open thou our lips.
and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. the song number 75.
you sit down for our reading. Here begins the 42nd verse of the fourth chapter of the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Here ends the first lesson. Thank you. 
The New Testament lesson is taken from John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who have eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This indeed, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its satisfy saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Here ends the New Testament lesson. Thank you.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in, a, in a knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, 
but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The choir will now sing the anthem, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing, by Vaughan Williams. Let us pray. Oh, loving Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today. And whether it be our first time or our 10,000th time, we can come before you in praise and worship of your glorious name. We thank you for the gifts that you give to our choir and to John playing the organ. We thank you that you have chosen for them to be here to enhance our worship beyond words. Thank you for the gifts that you give to each one of us 
to make our church family work together in unison to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, we pray for your grace and your glory and your compassion around the world. There are so many situations in our world that are in desperate need of your presence. We ask you that you bless all, the, all who work in different aid agencies around the world to bring compassion and care and medical assistance and love. May you bless them all richly as they do your work. Amen. Lord, we pray for the Queen and her family today. May you rain down your blessings upon each of them as they seek to do work for the very best for our country. Bless them and keep them safe. Amen. And we pray for all those in need of your healing touch today. And let's spend a moment lifting those people we know to God for healing. And we pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Those within our church family and beyond. May they feel the love and care that you have to offer them through the love of their friends and family. And guide us, Lord, to to know how to share your love with them. Guide us and keep us. And may we have a true experience of your Holy Spirit today and throughout this week. These prayers we lift to you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So we now stand to sing our next hymn, Give to our God Immortal Praise. No? got the right words but wrong title. Let's sing anyway.
speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. Please sit down. Those at home, plump up a cushion, be comfortable. What you offer matters. What you offer matters. Well, it's summertime and our vicar, Alan Garrow, and his family are off on holiday. But Alan is an educationalist, so before he goes on holiday, he sets us homework. So if you look at the front of the weekly news, you will see our vicar's homework for us. We are to think about our future together as the community at St. Peter's, to reflect on what we really value and to try our best to listen, to discern how God is calling us into a new future. I wonder, will it be a future of scarcity or abundance? And how does what we, each of us, offers make a difference? Scarcity or abundance, these are opposites, aren't they? Scarcity means there's not enough to go round, which leads people to anxiety, to mistrust, even to panic buying. It gives voice to those whose purposes are served by placing blame on others, scapegoating to tribalism in our modern society. Abundance means there's plenty to go round, which leads people to hospitality, to celebrating, to good work as time is freed up from worrying about tomorrow. And it gives voice to gratitude and its response in tolerance and generosity the virtuous cycle of abundant life. It's easy to miss just how brutally scarcity prevailed amongst the society that Jesus lived in. The oppression of the Roman Empire had ground them down over decades, taking land and possessions, denying their religion and culture, taxing them and extorting them. So it's all the more remarkable when we read how Jesus engaged with people. As he did this, it seems that scarcity was banished and replaced with abundance. The homes he was invited to, the folk who conversed with him, those who felt his healing touch and received his forgiveness, they were witnesses to, partakers of fullness of life. Jesus acknowledged scarcity when he said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But he immediately goes on to say, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And it's clear from the Bible and the Acts of the Apostles and the letters of Paul to the newly forming churches that as they followed the way of Jesus, they overcame the challenges of scarcity and developed into fullness, abundance and generosity. And so we too are called to be part of a community where people can experience abundant living today, flourish in the fullness of what it is to be human in the way that is God's loving purpose for every girl and boy and woman and man. And we're called not just to belong to this community, but to find the way in which we can each contribute uniquely to the life of this community, because God wants to make his love real in our life together. And he chooses, he chooses to do this by being with us and by working with us. So each one of us should be thinking, oh, what on earth can I offer? What can I bring to the practical and prayerful life of this community here at St. Peter's? 
And you know, funny old thing, the first voice in your head will not be God's. It will almost certainly be a voice born out of scarcity. I have nothing to offer. It's not for me. I'm new here. Someone else would be better at that than me. Please don't let your reflection stop at that miserable place. For each of us, I promise, has a unique calling and a part in the whole body that we can uniquely occupy. Please don't stop until you have found it. So let's turn to a minute for a minute to the gospel story we heard read from John chapter 6. Scarcity, yes, fully in evidence, writ large, a huge hungry crowd, 5,000 men, maybe 15, 20,000 in all, coming up the hill towards Jesus and his disciples. How on earth will these get fed? Then you get the Philip and Andrew partnership. I just recognize these thinking styles from working in different organizations. The problem stater. Well, the spreadsheet says this would take more money than we have. Thanks, that's really helpful. And then the wild idea generator. Oh, we've been offered a family's picnic. Maybe we, we could uh, fire it into the crowd with a catapult. But into this unpromising scene comes the act of God's grace. Jesus knew what he would do, for God makes abundance happen from scarcity by working with us, working with us as we are open to hear and respond to his call. The calling of the lad was to offer up his family's picnic, hopefully with permission, with no idea how this would help. But that's what he felt he could do and must do. And he played his part. And then Jesus takes these small, clearly inadequate gifts that have been offered, and he gives thanks to God for them. How amazing is that? And he gets on with using them, working with them to meet a need. Yes, and more, for the gospel story underlines the abundance that has come about. Twelve baskets of leftovers. Abundance from scarcity. That's how God longs to work with us. And it's happening all over the place in God's world, inside the church and outside of the church. And our world so needs it to happen more and for you and I to become part of this miracle. Many of us here will have our own experiences of being at the receiving end or of the giving end of the loving care of this community and of the sense of belonging, purpose and worship that it offers. I've witnessed three just in the last month that I will share very briefly and anonymously. I wonder if you notice that we all received the warmest welcome at the church door a few weeks ago from someone who volunteered at short notice to fill a place in the rota. And they chose not to say, I'm new here, because they are, but so ably represented the welcome of this community at the door. In other news, one of the congregation who earlier this year was gratefully, very gratefully, on the receiving end of practical care during ill health, was the very person who volunteered to provide gardening help to someone else that was in infirmity this month. And finally, the person living alone, cooking a meal from a recipe for four, deciding to put just one of the extra portions in the freezer for another day and ringing round to offer the remaining meals to his neighbours. What you offer matters, be it signing up for one of our rotors or taking some unique initiative. Because it is how God is at work here in this community, creating a new future that's about human flourishing in us and through us to others. 
as Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. I'm going to finish with a prayer from the lectionary reading today in Ephesians chapter 3. Paul's prayer for one of those young churches. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And now to him who by the power at work in us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in St. Peter's, in his church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Stuart. Shall we see if this is the right hymn? <laughs> City of God, how broad and far. Yay, we're right. <laughs> Please be stand. mentioned Alan is on holiday this week um, and so is Chris. I think Alan will be back on Sunday. So if any issues do crop up and you need clergy support, please do feel free to phone me and we'll muddle along the best we can, if that's all right. And so now we come to the blessing. May the peace of God 
that surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 